everyone, it's Alyssa from AlyssaMalani.com. I hope everyone is doing well. Today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the setup of my war binder. Now this is something that I have been working on for a while, um, not just in preparation for a video, but actually we're talking a couple of years, um, trying to figure out exactly how I wanted this to work and how um, it worked best for me and um, in kind of what works for my brain. Um, my brain on paper, I, I talk about that, or I will be talking about that um, a lot in the future. Uh, we all have different preferences and ways that things work for us, and so trying to get my brain wrapped around this concept has been a bit of a journey. And I'm, I've come to a place where I feel comfortable and it feels like it's going to work, and so I'm literally taking you, or I'm starting you off at the beginning of this particular um, version. <laughs> it's kind of evolved over time, but I'm, I'm taking you at the beginning of this version and um, will hopefully over time be able to show you how it is progressing, maturing, and developing. Okay? So first of all, if you don't know what a war binder is, um, it is defined in many different ways from what I've seen online. Um, it has been um, a term that can be interchangeable with spiritual planner, spiritual binder, faith planner, faith binder, prayer notebook, prayer journal, um, and so many other things in between. I consider a war binder to be the paper version um, of a war room. And for those of you who have seen the movie War Room, you know that that is a closet um, where the women in the movie were putting up um, prayers on the walls of the war room and and um, really focusing on deep earnest fervent prayer um, for their families in their lives and so I don't have enough space in my home for a war room so it happens in here and that's what I consider a war binder my Bible study happens in a different book and I'll be doing a video on that once I'm ready to do that but I consider a war binder to be everything prayer related and it does not have any Bible study um, elements in it. So I hope that helps as you are developing your own or thinking about starting your own war binder or Bible study journal. Um, that's kind of how I differentiate it in my head. Okay, so enough of that. I am going to show you the bits and pieces. Uh, first of all, let me just start off with a few things here. Um, I did set up my binder after, or how should I say this? A lot of things kind of came together for me after I read Fervent, which um, is by Priscilla Shire. Um, a lot of people have used this in conjunction with or in planning for and putting together their war binders. Um, and I highly recommend it as um, a resource for putting this together. In other words, this is not a, um, a complete work on prayer, but it addresses some very, very important aspects of prayer and the way we can approach prayer and the way that we can plan and strategize in our prayer lives. So I highly recommend it. I really recommend you get the hard copy. Um, I'm an audiobook listener and I love audiobooks, but you really want to have the hard copy so that you can highlight, so that you can make notes, so that you can reread it. And um, she's got verses, she's got scriptures um, at the end of each chapter that you can use in your prayer strategies. And then at the very back, she's got the prayer cards. And so I highly, highly recommend you getting an actual um, hard copy of the book. Okay, so um, this was one of my resources. And I'm going through a couple of other books on prayer just to get more ideas um, for how I can continue to grow and mature in this space. Um, the other supplies that I use, I'm just going to get this out of the way, I use Avery products, which you can get at Walmart. You can get um, similar products at Target, um, but I'm at Walmart more often than I'm at Target, so it's just more readily available. So I use um, half-sized filler paper. Um, it's lined, as you can see. I usually try to keep a pack of that around. Um, I have, I think, one or two of these binder pockets in there. They're just multicolored pockets. I wish it had one in the back too, but it's just one-sided. 
I think I've got one of these in there. Uh, that package is open. And then I use sheet protectors. I love these, you guys. Um, I use these as my dividers, okay? Um, or some of my dividers. And then I don't have the packaging for it, but I also use these dividers here. Um, these are also Avery. Um, I don't have the package for it, but it comes with, what is that, five? And um, it's part of that line as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up. Um, the other resource, let's also kind of begin here, um, that I used, and I didn't um, print this out until just the other day, because I hadn't thought to look up, look for it until just the other day. But the other resource that I use is um, this printout by a woman named Gina Garland. She has a video on YouTube that I have watched, oh my goodness, at least a dozen times, if not more. Um, she has her own prayer notebook um, that she explains um, very well on her video, and then she's got this handout. And I will link both the video and the handout um, in the description. Um, but I just typed in prayer notebook, Gina Garland, and it came up. It's a PDF. I printed it, on, um, I printed it half size um, so I can just slip it in here and keep it here. Okay, and this was a really, really great resource for setting up the, um, the whole structure of this book. All right, um, I keep stickers back here. These are just um, some kind of Bible verse religious stickers I got at Hobby Lobby and those hang out there. Um, the paper pad that I use, let me go ahead and get that out of the way too, if I can find it. Here it is. The paper pad that I used is a Me and My Big Ideas paper pad. Uh-huh, I don't know what the name of it is. Is it just called Hello? I don't know, but it's cardstock and it's lovely. I've had this for a while. As you can see, there aren't very many sheets left. <laughs> um, but that is the paper pad that I use throughout this book. So if you see a design or something, it probably came from that pad. Um, I just have a piece of vellum and I just put more binder there. And then this is some of that cardstock, that, um, that paper pad. And all I did was fold it in half and then um, secure the sides together. I just kind of glued it together and then punched it. And that way it's, it's even thicker than cardstock. Okay, throughout the book you're gonna see um, some title pages that I got from a free printable set online and I will link that below. I cannot remember the name of the blog. I think it's called Daily Dwelling. I think. Um, and I saw this um, collection on a couple of other videos and so and then I just happened to see it on Pinterest and I was like oh I recognize that. So I went to the original source and found it and printed it out half size um, to print in here. So this just says pray without ceasing. And then this is this comes from the book Fervent. These are the areas of prayer strategy that she talks about in the book. Okay, so this is, I just made kind of a table of contents, so to speak, for the rest of my book. Um, just listed out there. This I got off Pinterest. I will try, I may not link everything in the description box um, because there are a lot of things and I don't want it to be confusing because you can only format it so, so far. But um, I will be doing a blog post where I will put everything that I find um, or that I have found that I can find to link. Um, that way you can find everything that, um, that I've used. So this just came off Pinterest, 31 prayer prompts for your prayer time, um, just as a resource to have on hand. And then another one, prompts for your first 30, 30 days of prayer journaling, just another resource. I printed these on cardstock so that um, they would hopefully um, hold up better. Than just regular paper and wouldn't tear quite as easily. All right, so the first section I have, the first actual section that I have is worship. And this is just a place to write song lyrics and scripture that focus on worshiping God. When you're praying, you want to start out with worship. Um, some people call this section praise and adoration or just praise or something um, along those lines. And so literally all that is in here are song lyrics and scripture. And I, um, 
this is another one of the um, the title pages that goes with ha, 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 that goes with this collection. Okay, that's another title page. So praise. I'm planning on putting things like um, the different names of God um, and other just bits and pieces um, from scripture, poetry, those kinds of things, and then keep them in here. So I just have some song lyrics. I love stickers, so I kind of played around with that and uh, have some song lyrics, okay? The um, second section is confession. Um, before we go asking God for things, we really need to be honest about um, the areas in our life where we may have failed, where we have um, sinned, um, and not just confess those things just to tell him, because he knows, but also to be honest about where we are struggling and to face those things and let him deal with those things with us. Um, so this is that area. Now, I do want to point out, <laughs> this is where I was kind of a little confused about how this whole Warbinder thing worked out. So in all of these sections, really part of the use is so that you can write down scripture to pray through or scripture to help you focus and understand what you need to pray for and what you need to remember to, um, to pray about. It doesn't mean that you have to write everything out. And that's kind of what I thought this was. I was like, man, I don't really have time to sit here and write everything out. Um, but you don't have to. This is, this is a place where it can kind of keep you focused. There will be times where you want to write out a whole prayer. But there will be other times where all you need are some scriptures, are some, some words that can help you kind of navigate through what you're praying through. So Psalms would be a great place to, to start with confessions um, and then other scriptures in the Bible. So that's what I plan on putting in here. There's nothing in here yet. This is a new section for me that I didn't quite have in this space. Um, so that's what this is going to be. And when I do kind of an update later on, I should have some things in here to show you. Uh, um, oh, here's another divider or um, title page in here. This is scripture. Like I said, I don't do any Bible study related things in here. So, but I really liked this page and I, I really liked the idea of having a place for scripture. I might might do a whole actual divider that is dedicated to scripture writing. I already have a, let's see if I can find it. I already have a scripture writing journal where I do my daily scripture writing like that, you can see. Um, but there will be times where I might want to do more than one or I don't know. I, I'm kind of letting this hang out here because it just seemed like a good place to have it. It could also, whoa, derailed. Let's put that back. Sorry, you guys. Let's make sure that that's where it needs to be. <laughs> okay. Real life, y'all, real life. Anyway, um, this could also hang out. That is going to make me so incredibly uncomfortable. I'm going to want to redo this whole thing, but we're like over 10 minutes in, so I'm just going to keep going. Anyway, this could also hang out in the worship section um, where I write scripture and lyrics. I don't know. I just, I have it here. I put it in here and we'll see what happens with it. Okay, so moving on. The next section is me, okay? And in the Gina Garland handout, in the Gina Garland handout, in the handout that Gina Garland made, she, her second section is um, myself and she talks about the different areas that we can pray about um, in regards to ourselves so myself as a wife myself as a mom if you're a mother um, myself as a friend a sister a daughter a daughter-in-law an employee a servant so this is a place where you address those things and ask God to lead in those areas of your life stick this. Actually, I might refer to it again, so I'm going to stick it over here. Um, here's another one of those title pages. The other thing that I place in here for now, here's one of those um, pocket binder thing, 
finder pocket things. I have the first few journaling cards, or I'm sorry, prayer cards from Fervent. So, like I said in the back, it has these, it's perforated, you tear them out. And what I did was I just added a little washi tape because I love washi. And so for each one of the strategies, I've got, she talks about my passion, my focus, my identity. So I did these three first. I have not filled them out yet. On the front, I'm planning on putting the actual prayer, um, write a prayer in the back to start writing scriptures. And I will probably, I was originally thinking of doing one pocket per card, um, which turns out to be 10 pockets, which starts to bulk this up a little bit. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do here. I might just slip all of them in here. Okay. Um, but we'll see. This is, like I said, this is a setup. I don't have everything quite figured out yet. So that's where my prayer cards go. I found this on Pinterest as well. This is by, this is from a virtuouswoman.org. She has a lot of really great resources, you guys. I um, encourage you to check her out. Um, and this is just 10 virtues of a proud 31 woman that I can consider in my prayer time. And then here's some more blank paper. The next section is my husband. So um, if you are married, it is extremely important that we keep um, our husbands high on our prayer priority list. Um, as a wife, we are to um, really be, you know, we're supposed to be his help meet, but we're also supposed to be his biggest cheerleader and his biggest, um, um, I guess, faith partner. I'm looking for something else, but it's not coming to me. But you know what I'm saying. We should be his bigger, par biggest partner in faith. I have a verse, I have a verse on the back of each one of these. Well, ha ha ha, I need to do that one. Um, I have a verse on the back of most of these um, to kind of um, explain what the section is about. And so on this one, I have Proverbs 31, 11, and 12. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he have he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of his life. So that's just to kind of remind me what this is all about. I have a little journaling card. It's a little plastic one that I just punched and put in there. And then another one of those title pages from that pack. And then I also found this on Pinterest and um, I thought it was really cool. Praying for your husband from head to toe, for his brain, for his eyes, his ears, his mouth, his heart, his arms, his legs, and his feet. And so, and it's got little verses to go with it. And I thought that was super cool. So I put that in there as well as a, this is a 31 days of praying daily for your husband. And I thought that was really cool. So I punched it and have it folded in there as well. And I'll try to link all that either in the description or in the blog post and then some paper. And then prayers for my marriage. Do I have anything in here? No. Um, and this would be pretty much the same, the same um, thought. I believe she's got the same in here. <laughs> yes. So spouse, that my husband, and then marriage. Um, so I plan on going through this more in depth. I've only perused this. I've just watched her video like a million times, but I am going to actually go through this and start um, implementing um, some of those things in the sections. But um, so that's pretty self-explanatory. And then my home. Um, this is not something that I originally considered, but as I was on Pinterest looking through different prayer prompts and resources and things, I found some things for praying for my home. And I thought, and I had, I'd seen that concept before, but I just, it never occurred to me to put it in my in my journal so here I have um, this is not mine I did not make this but there are different scriptures to help in praying for different areas of your home this is called a prayer walkthrough so the idea is that you walk through your home and in the different rooms you pray for you pray for the things that that happen in those rooms so, and this is especially, especially great if you have kids. Um, parents can walk into each of their children's rooms and pray for their children and pray for um, just the influence of family on your children's lives and, and all of those things. So, my husband and I don't have kids, so I did not um, 
so that's not going to apply to us, this bedroom section, but um, I thought it was really, really great, a really, really great resource, and so I um, want to continue to collect more verses um, and praying for my home. Okay, this is the next section, and in this handout and in her video, she explains that she has her notebook divided up into two sections, okay? And so this would have been considered her first section, and this is going to be considered her second section, okay? I don't do mine exactly like hers, um, but I kind of got a general structural concept from hers, okay? So this is weekly prayers, okay? And the concept is that on Monday you pray for something specific, on Tuesday you pray for something specific, and on and on. I like that, however, I didn't label them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, okay? I have the, the, the different categories, but some of these things I'll be praying for daily, and some of them will be weekly or bi-weekly or however... Um, you know, however the spirit moves or however um, often I feel is necessary, um, depending on the prayer request and the person and, um, and the situation. So it really depends. Um, but I didn't come to that conclusion until after I did my little um, title on my divider. So I'm just going to keep it as is and just go from there. Um, this is a another... Um, page protector, have mercy, my brain just stopped. And um, I plan on using this kind of as a mini prayer wall, like you would in a war room. And um, I just got, I have sticky notes on both sides. And if there's a prayer request that is urgent, that, you know, forget categorizing it, forget all of that, um, I can jot it in here and pray for it um, as needed. Okay, so this is kind of like the urgent prayer wall, <laughs> so to speak. Okay, and then um, as they are, as they are either answered um, or finished or, or whatever, um, I will write the answers on another sheet of paper. Okay, so that's that. All right, so we are gonna see the first section. Now, the first section is for family. So, my um, my parents, my in-laws, my sibling. Uh, I have one brother, and then I have um, in-laws, sibling in-laws. I hope I said that right. Um, and then my extended family, so aunts, uncles, cousins, just everybody that I can think of to pray for will happen in here. And this does have a page, a title page. Okay. And then the second section is friends. Now, what they, what a lot of um, people do that I've seen is they have family and then they have Christian friends and then non-Christian friends. And I understand the concept, like, especially if you're praying for non-Christian friends who you hope will, um, you know, find the Lord, I can see how you would want to pray specifically for that. However, I can do those specific things in the same section. So I just put all friends in here regardless of their um, state of faith, um, if you will. So that's friends. There's a title page for that. Uh, the second section is ministry. So my husband and I are both involved in our church um, in a few different ministries, and so I have a place to pray for that um, because we, we really need to be on our knees when it comes to the different areas of service that we're involved in. Um, in here, there isn't a title page for ministry. That's something that I just decided to put in there on my own. But um, since we don't have kids, I did have this title page, um, and I decided to put it in here because I'm involved in youth and children's ministries. And that is my husband. Hold on. All right, sorry about that. That is the second time that has happened. I need to learn to put my phone on silent. Um, but I actually did need to talk to him. So anyway, um, like I was saying, um, I'm, both of us are involved um, in one way or another in children's ministries and youth ministries. And so, um, and I have a lot of friends and family who have children that are very very precious to me and so this I decided to put this in here just so that I can keep those uh, you know either my students or my friends and family's children in prayer um, because especially as a teacher and and you know being an aunt um, or cousin or you know whatever I am to, <laughs> to various children um, I should be praying for them too so um, even though we don't have kids and I thought that this um, divider was, or this title page was kind of irrelevant, I thought, oh, wait a second, there are a lot of children in my life, so I want to keep them in prayer as well. So that's where that is. 
And then um, the next section I have is church. And this is supposed to be praying for your church leaders and um, members of your congregation, um, missionaries, um, people who are serving the Lord, Bible workers, those kinds, those people. Um, and there is a title page for that. And then lastly is, this is called Reaching Beyond. Other people call it, oh, it just left me. Um, like government leaders, you know, something like that. I'm, I can't, it just left, I, I can't even think of what they might put that, um, or, or what they might title that succinctly. But um, I just went ahead and used the title that um, is on this cover sheet. And yes, it does include um, the president, America, governor, presidential advisors, local government, Supreme Court, public schools, media, military, house and senate, enemies, missionaries, economy. Um, there's just like a whole list of things. Now, some of this will fall under church, um, like missionaries or the body of Christ um, or prayer warriors. But um, but then that's fine. Some of, that, some of that overlaps. But um, these are things, these are areas that we don't always consider in our prayer life. Like we think about our family and our friends and the people that we interact with. But at least for me, I don't always consider to pray for the people in authority, the people that aren't in my immediate sphere, the people that I hear about on the news, um, especially those people that maybe I'm not particularly fond of, um, whether in this country or in other countries. And so, but, um, you know, I'm doing a scripture challenge, scripture writing challenge right now for the month of February, and it's talking about love. And, you know, God says we're supposed to love our enemies and love our neighbors. Um, we're supposed to love the people that aren't necessarily in our families that might be strangers to us. We're supposed to love them. And part of loving them isn't just some kind of warm, fuzzy feeling, um, which often isn't even something that we can conjure up. <laughs> um, but an act of love would be to pray for them. And so this is where um, the weekly prayer setup would come into play because I won't necessarily be here every single day. But a weekly you know, um, intentional uh, mention in my prayers in this area is a good thing. And so that's where I think the weekly helps, even in church or in ministry, you know, you don't, you're not going to pray everything every single day. You might just have time, depending on your day, just to pray for your husband or just to pray for yourself or just to s sit and confess your sins and, and, um, and just, get your heart clean, um, or even just, you might just have five minutes to worship and to consider scripture and sing a song. Um, you know, it, it's not like you have to sit here every single day and feel pressured to sit here every single day to, um, to get all of this done. This is, again, just a place of focus, just a place to organize, just a place to, to be intentional and to plan and to have these things in the forefront. A place to put your prayer requests so that when you tell somebody, yeah, I'll pray for you, you're not, you know, you don't um, prove yourself to be a liar. I mean, that's kind of deep. Um, I try to be really, really intentional while I tell people that I'll pray for them because I don't want to say it and then not do it. So um, this, is a, this is a place to answer that as well. So um, that's the setup from beginning to end. Um, also, oh, you know what? This is kind of beyond the point now, but I do want to say this. If you are not married, okay, this is something that I wish I had done when I was a teenager and in my early 20s when I was single. If you are not married, you might be thinking, oh, well, you know, I don't have a husband to pray for. Um, I don't have children to pray for. I don't have a home. You might not have a home of your own you, or, you know, I don't have a marriage to pray for. I don't have a home of my own. You might be living with your parents or, you know, with roommates or whatever. Um, I want you to think about it this way. If you're not married and maybe you're living at home or at school, like in a dorm or something like that, you can always pray for your future husband. Um, that is something that's extremely important because if marriage is in your future that means that this man already exists and that he is living a life somewhere um, either that you don't know or maybe you do know him you don't know um, even if maybe you have <laughs> maybe you might have your eye on someone this is also a place where you can 
give that to God. There's nothing wrong with having a crush or, or, you know, the warm, fuzzy feelings and all of that, but it needs to be given to God so that he can either, um, I don't want to say squelch those feelings, but he can put them in the proper place. You can make sure that you're retaining your purity. Um, you can write, I used to write love letters to my future husband. Um, that I have a stack of letters that I gave to my husband when we got married. Um, you can write those in here. Um, just, you know, ask God to keep him safe. Ask God that, um, to lead him in the direction that he needs to go. Ask him to um, be with his family. His family is going to be your family one day. You might as well pray for them too. And then in the marriage section, if you're not married, you can still pray and consider the things that you need to know that you need to consider when you get married to give um, to ask God to give you the proper view of marriage um, not everybody goes into marriage with the right concept of what marriage is so ask God to help um, put your focus where it needs to be when it's um, you know in regards to marriage if you have kind of a, a little bit of a skewed version of, or, or view of what marriage is ask him to help you kind of straighten that out um, and then home, you live somewhere, right? Whether it's a place of your own or it's not, you can still pray for your dwelling, wherever that is, with whomever it is, and ask God to bless that space. Um, and to, and to even pray for your future home. Let's say that, um, you know, married or not, let's say that you and your family or you and your husband or you yourself are planning on moving somewhere, but you're not exactly sure where that place is going to be. Um, you can pray for the place that you currently live in, but you can also pray for the place that you might one day end up in. So um, that actually applies for me and my husband. We don't plan on staying where we're at forever. And so literally just thought of this as I was talking <laughs> to consider praying for the for the home that I will one day have, um, hopefully. <laughs> um, and to, to ask God to direct my my prayers and my thoughts and my plans to where he would have them and, and ask him to lead in, in those areas. So, um, you know, this is set up for me as a wife, but you're going to set up yours for you as a, and I'm not working full time anymore, but maybe you are. So you can put your career in here. Actually, I can put my career in here. I didn't think about that. But you can pray for yourself as an employee, as a, maybe you manage your own business, uh, as a coworker, all of those kinds of things can go in here. Um, maybe um, you have a section for, you know, maybe you're in school, so you have a section for your education and um, asking God to lead in your studies and um, um, to, to ask him to help um, you decide which classes to take or to help with your time management. Ooh, I need to add that in here somewhere. Time management is huge, um, just in life in general, not just in school. But think about the areas of your life, literally. Get a piece of paper and write, and I did this, I have since thrown it away, but have a piece of paper and write out the different areas of your life that need to be covered in prayer. The things that you can categorize. Over time, it's going to change. It's going to grow. It's going to develop. You're going to find out, ooh, I don't really need this section, but man, do I need, you know, some other section. Um, you're going to, it's going to change as your life seasons change. Um, I am planning on probably using this for the year. And what I'm hoping is that it fills up so that by next year, I'll need a brand new one. So I'm thinking instead of just taking things out and archiving them somewhere to just keep what I, as long as I can keep things in here, as long as they'll fit, have a whole year of prayer. And so I can look back and see how God has worked in my life, how I've grown and matured, how things have changed and progressed. And so I have a record of that. And then hopefully next year I will um, have a new one. Um, I don't know why I just turned that over. Anyway, that is it. If you all have any questions, you have any thoughts or um, anything that you want to say about this video, let me know. Um, like I said, I will, I'll link a few things in the description, but when I write the blog post, I will link that in here um, in the description so that you, you can have an exhaustive look of everything that has been used, um, anything that I can find. Um, I'll put it in here and I will try to have that up 
by the end of the week so that um, it is there for you. Um, I am trying to think if there's anything else I have left out. Do get a copy of the book Fervent. If you have not read it, read it. Again, it's not an exhaustive um, work on prayer, but it is extremely, extremely useful, especially if you, especially if you are either new to all of this <laughs> or like me, you're needing to be more intentional and more strategic about your prayer life. Um, prayer isn't supposed to be just something we say before we eat or something we just do before we go to bed. It's something um, that we should, that should be a part of our lifestyle. And if the devil is as smart as he is, because he is, and if he knows us the way he knows us, because he does, he watches us, and if he plans and strategizes against us, which he does, because he doesn't want us to have a relationship with God. If he does all of those things, then we best better be on our knees and in the word and strategizing just as seriously and as intentionally more so, so that by the grace of God and in his strength, we can not be overcome by him. So that is all I have for today. Again, any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them below. Um, otherwise, I will see you all later, and I will be revisiting this and showing you all what has um, transpired <laughs> between these covers. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.